one that I'm proud of because I think, because Melanie is so committed to community, um, she really allowed us to take the time to hear what was happening, what had happened, and, and figure out how to translate that into a theatrical experience. And we had um, one character but three voices. So three actors, one live, um, two recorded, and the bus driver would, turned out to be the fourth character in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, she was fantastic, she, um, a real bus driver. <laughs> and, um, and the piece was about 90 minutes. And did, how did that work? Like it just, it stopped, performed, and, and I mean, how, t can you just talk about just the, I mean, we're gonna talk more about logistics, of, but kind of how it worked. As, as a audience member, you actually got on the bus in um, East Harlem, and the bus went across the bridge and traveled through the various neighborhoods of the South Bronx. Um, the, it, the difficulty for me as a writer, I live in uh, Los Angeles, and um, I had never lived in the South Bronx. So it, it was a great learning experience to find out that history, which is, is very complex. And the, the landscape itself is very um, complex in terms of the amount of uh, um, the ways in which it really is a, 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 gar a dumping ground for Manhattan and for New York City. And so it was, the hard thing was how do you represent the people who live there as a vibrant community and also be honest to the actual history of what's happening. And so that, that was the tricky thing to negotiate in terms of tone and in terms of representation. But you know, again, I, I, in many ways, I feel like Melanie should be here because from the very beginning, it was her, the expansiveness of her imagination and the, the risks taking that she allowed all of us to engage in made the piece possible. That's great. Uh, Joanne, talk about your project. Yeah, The Pastures of Heaven uh, was the result of uh, Jonathan Moscone, the artistic director of California Shakespeare Theater, coming to myself and my co-artistic director, Susan Harlow, um, and saying that he wanted to collaborate with us on a project. They have a program called New Works new communities, and they engage with another theater company that is, uh, diff you know, has a different process and, uh, and creates a new play uh, based on a classic uh, play and engages in a community in the process of developing that play. So we got together uh, members from both of our companies, and he, he said to us, I want to um, adapt a novel, because word for word performs short works of fiction unadapted, and I can talk about that more in the next question, but we, he said, I want to adapt a novel with you guys. And so we got together, we read lots of different, you know, everybody in, from both companies brought their ideas of what novels we thought we might like to try. We read, you know, uh, Anna Karenina, and gosh, I don't know, we read, you know, probably 10 or 15 different, or excerpts of different novels. And um, um, one day, somebody from our company remembered that we had in fact, done a story from John Steinbeck's The Pastures of Heaven, which is a novel in 12 linked stories about the Salinas Valley. And um, we started reading that out loud, as we did with all of the pieces. We passed the book around the table, and we knew immediately at about you know, sentence number two that this was the piece that we were going to do. And so over the next two and a half years or so, we did about five workshops together. We got together every six months or so for about a week. And we read the book out loud, we, we improved, you know, we did a lot of process. And then, uh, and at the same time, bringing in playwright Octavio Solis, who actually created the script of the piece. And it was premiered last June. There were 11 actors, I think about uh, over 40 characters in the piece, and I think it was about two hours. 40 characters, wow. Um, and can I, I just, did you get the grant to enter the process, or did you already? Pastures of Heaven when you received the grant? I was talking to the development director over there, and I think we were already in process when we got the grant. Okay. So we knew that we were going to do this development, but it certainly helped a lot. Yeah, I just wondered where, you know, where yeah. the grant money came in. Great. Yeah. Uh, and then, Lana, tell us about. Um, uh, I've never been so happy. Um, that was conceived by the playwright Kirk Lynn and the composer Peter Stopshinsky, uh, I think back in like 2007. Um, 
they, Peter had co-composed a piece, uh, Play With Music, that we did back in 2003 called El Paraiso, and I know um, Kirk and Peter figured out quickly that they wanted to keep working together. So they brought uh, something that they had started working on to us in 2007, and I agreed to stage it um, for a one-night concert staging. Um, and then uh, Rude Max decided we really wanted to move forward with the project um, as it grew into a full-scale musical, which we'd never done before. <laughs> um, it was a huge challenge for us, and this grant certainly gave us the opportunity to sort of be super expansive. It's always the play that you are certain will never tour, um, that you're like, fuck it, let's make it as big as we can. And sure enough, here we are. Um, thank you, Arena. All of them are up there. There's like 20 people. <laughs> I am 123rd of the creative team now. I mean, everybody that's working on this project's been with it pretty much from the beginning and has had as much agency as anyone else once Kirk and, and Peter really handed over the goods. Like, it's been in development since then, and um, it's been a real pleasure to work on. We, we've done two workshop productions, um, one back in December of 08, where we gave ourselves, I think, like 10 days to rehearse it and put it up, and that was part one. And then we did um, part two, at uh, the University of Texas New Musical Theater Initiative um, gave us a, a three-week residency there to work with students and develop some of the scenes. And then we went to Orchard Project for a week and wrote a bunch of stuff out there. And then, uh, yeah, we put up part three in September of 09. Um, so we've we've sort of sort of seen everything once, but we've never seen it all together. So here at Arena will be the first time we've seen it from beginning to end without stopping. <laughs> And, um, and we were super excited after the September 2009 production, Center Theater Group came on as a producing partner um, and is helping us get to our premiere in April in Austin at our theater, the Off Center. Cool. And, and how big is it? I mean, I got a little drool there, but what's, uh, what's the size of the piece? Um, it's got uh, currently nine actors, five dancers, and six musicians. Yeah, that's a, mm. <laughs> it's a big, it's yeah, big. Yeah, yeah. It's great. It's great. So let's, I mean, I, I I have some kind of particular questions for each of you as, as I was reading about your process. And maybe Atlanta will just start back with you and you can talk a little bit about, I mean, you guys did this thing where it was really like two productions in one, where there was the creative team that was doing the production and then you and, and some other folks in the company were actually doing these, these interactive installations. And um, you uh, talked about how this allowed, this kind of dual nature of the project allowed the artists who weren't in the production to be kind of actively creating right alongside the production. Yeah, yeah. And I, I just thought that was this idea of like parallel tracks of creativity throughout the company was 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 really interesting so I wanted to talk about that so yeah I think that really I mean any, anybody who's uh, root mechanicals is a collective um, we have six co-producing artistic directors and I, I think and we've been around for 15 years um, so if you know anything about the collective you know that at year 10 um, all the authorship fights start happening and um, that was what happened to us and I think this was a, a really uh, inventive answer to that to that issue of um, where's my voice in this project now if it's fully scripted already and handed to me as a director or an actor or whatever where 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 do I fit in um, and this was a way Thomas Graves is the co-director um, with me on this project and we talked a lot about that because um, I'm, I'm an actor first and a director you know on this project um, so, trying to find our way in when the script is done and the music is done and, and, you know, working with incredibly gifted actors who are, you know, staging themselves is just like kind of a cakewalk. So what do we want to do? And also, how do we address the issues that the play is addressing about the West and gender identity and gender equality and land development? There's a lot that, I mean, it's a tall tale what we've created in, in, the, in the operetta form, and it touches all of these issues, but as artists, we wanted a chance to sort of really poke at them. Um, so Thomas and, and I uh, decided, uh, we had started doing this on a prior project, the Method Gun of, of Lab Nights, of having our company come in and create their own, lead their own nights for the rest of the company around issues of whatever play we were developing at the time. And, um, those, those works are really informative and really dive in and, and, and help us create the play, but often get edited out um, for time. Uh, so we decided for this one, what if we don't edit anything out? Like, what if we create this entire parallel track that works in concert with it and also um, is, is, gives the audience as much agency as the artists who are creating this stuff has, so that we're all in conversation about the work we've seen inside um, and we have, a, we have our own space in Austin. It's sort of a converted warehouse, and 
So we've done it a couple of different ways. We did the installation. It's, it, it was just an installation of what we call performance booths, because we don't know what else to call them right now, or a transmedia performance party. Um, <laughs> but it's just a, a lot of different installations that are audience interactive um, and range from have a margarita to uh, watch a documentary about how your parents fucked you up to, I mean, it's about, you know, parenting and dachshunds in the West and um, there's just a lot. And then the second one we did was sort of a, an outdoor carnival, um, you know, so you could get fried food in the shape of Texans or you could really learn how to make rope um, from scratch. Uh, so it, it was just whatever, whatever any company member or local artist, local visual artist or, or uh, performance artist had in mind that that you know um, whatever resonated inside of the themes of the West and all of these mm -hmm. issues that we've raised, they could just come and do whatever, and not, and they were all audience interactive. So it was just a big party, and um, it's something we got very attached to. And and while I think the play very very much stands up on its own, it's in our hearts. It really has to have all of this other work that accompanies it. Um, will it tour with that other stuff, or will it tour on its own, out of curiosity? Will it tour? Will it tour? <laughs> <laughs> I was just projecting on, on that. I mean, know. when we talk about the fantasy tour, where yes. somebody's rich enough to bring us all, um, then we talk about uh, curating it on, like Thomas and I, it would be really fun to go, say, to L.A., and... Uh, <laughs> you, you, you see I was planting that, right? Yeah. <laughs> there you are. I couldn't find you in the house. <laughs> It would be really fun to go to L.A. And, uh, and say have, I don't know, something like CTG staff um, curate their own, their own yeah. version of the installation that we, would, that we would work with them on so that we had like a, you know, a West Coast interpretation of what the West is in their minds or, you know, an East Coast one or... That's great. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> we can keep going with that. No. Uh, so, so, um, the, uh, so, Joanne, you guys worked, I mean, you guys do this work, I mean, it's word for, your, your, your title is word for word, and that's how you guys uh, approach text. And so you brought this to Cal Shakes and talk about trying to bring um, the method out, you know, the kind of the methodology of uh, yeah. uh, your, your differing methodologies to what, you know, adaptation or non adaptation looks right, like. Right, right. Yeah, so when, we, when word for word performs a short story, short story, we do not cut or edit any piece of text. We perform the he says and the she says and all the narrative, but it's fully <coughs> produced and acted and memorized as a play with lights and sets and costumes and all of that. Um, so when we got brought this together with Jonathan and Cal Shake's company and Octavio, um, I don't think any of us knew what the end result was going to be. Nobody had a particular idea. It, you know, so we took everybody through our process, which is kind of like jamming, you know, it's kind of like jazz, you know, we first, we sit around and we, we read the text and <clears throat> we say, okay, you play this part, you play that part, you take that role and everybody else is anything else that might be in that world. And when you feel like it, you jump in and you take what you think your character or that, you know, the tree or whatever, um, might say, and we just played a lot with that. And then Jonathan was also inspired by, um, he had recently directed Nicholas Nickleby, and so he was inspired by the Royal Shakespeare Company's process of creating that play. And so we broke up into groups, and we would each take the same story, but we would go off and interpret it in our own, you know, each group's way, and come back and, and perform that for each other. So we spent a lot of time doing that kind of work. And it was a couple of, you know, it was probably a year before Octavio actually handed us text uh, that, you know, he had written from the, the play. And so it was a really interesting process of deciding um, how much narrative was there, how much of Steinbeck's actual words were there, and how much was Octavio's.